All right, folks. Well, I wanted to talk a little bit about the maintenance side of things and maybe a little bit about product support. So, again, pretty much from the moment your product goes live, uh, maybe even from a little bit before that, you're going to be dealing with maintenance and support issues. Where, you know, for maintenance, you're looking at what you have to do to adapt the code. And for support, you're looking at what you have to do to help the client or customer actually use the product. So with maintenance, you're looking at changes to the product, changes to the data, the documentation, whatever that might take to make sure that as the client's needs change and evolve, your product evolves as well so that it's always doing what they need. Um, this should be a fairly high priority from very early in the design process, right? The idea is, you know, we don't want to spend the bulk of a product's life cycle designing and developing it and then have it used for a short period of time. You want to design and develop something and then have it in use for a long period of time, which means that the conditions are going to change, the client's needs are going to change, and we're going to need to be able to adapt the product and we're going to need to be able to support it. So we should probably be thinking about that right from the beginning. I'll talk a little bit about the support side first. Um, you know, we're, we've all dealt with various forms of support from various places, but you've got live support where you're directly interacting with the user, whether it's talking to them on the phone or whether it's actually in, in person or whether it's Zoom or whether it's chat or email or forums or whatever it might be, you're actually interacting with them as they're experiencing the problem. Um, you can provide interactive support through the tool itself where you've got little tool tips and wizards and you pop-ups and you know, roll over something and it gives you help, gives you guidance, right? Anything that's kind of automated but helps walk the user through what they're trying to do. And of course, you've got the static side of things where you've got web pages or, or even in the old days, printed pages to go off and that people could browse through and actually look for the specific item that will help them in what they're trying to do. So you want decent search tools, uh, decent index, decent table of contents, um, you know, decent guides and manuals and structure and organization to help the user find the information they want. Um, quite often you're going to find that your live support personnel, your live support is going to be tightly interacting with the whatever bug reporting system that you have. Because quite often, the way you're going to hear about bugs is by somebody calling up looking for support. This is happening. I don't know why. Help. And so quite often it's going to be your support personnel that wind up filing the actual bug reports based on the information they're getting from the user. All right. On the maintenance side of things, again, if we've got a product that's going to be in use for a long time, the environment it's working in is going to change. The client's needs are going to change. The hardware that it's running on is going to change. The software that it's running on is going to change, right? We're going to be installing it on different places and using it in different things. Operating systems get upgrades. New software gets installed, right? There's all this evolution of the actual envir uh, computing environment it's operating in and also the changing business needs for the client. You know, if you've got tax software, the tax laws change every year. The product has to change a bit every year to adapt to them. So your system's need to adapt to stay useful. So usually folks break it down into kind of three main categories of changes. Corrective changes where you're fixing something that's actually wrong, something that's broken. Right? So those are the bug fixes. Adaptive changes are more the cases where you're trying to change your product because of changes in what's around it, where you need new functionality or different functionality that it currently provides something that wasn't anticipated during development. And then the perfective changes where you're just going to get it to do what it does, but a little bit better. You know, maybe you use a better algorithm, maybe you use a better data structure, maybe you just figure out a, a way to clean up an interface or whatever it might be, um, improve error checking or something along those lines, where you're just enhancing what it does now without really changing much in the way of functionality. So, a few major categories. And again, you can anticipate that if your product is out there for a long time, it's going to go through these. Quite often, you're going to find that because of that, 
a lot of the money that you spend on a product over its lifetime is spent on maintenance and support. And so organizations put a lot of focus into looking at where that money goes over time. Right? So you look at your maintenance trends and your support trends. Am I spending more and more and more over the, the months, over the years to maintain this one particular product or to support this one particular product? Right? A lot like bug tracking and bug reporting where you're watching trends over time to see if the product is gradually becoming unmaintainable or unsupportable. Now, so aging systems can, do tend to require more and more costly maintenance and support. Right? They're getting more out of touch with the environment. They, the conditions they're operating in now aren't the conditions we envisioned way back when it was originally created. And we've also layered fix upon fix and change upon change upon change into the code, and the code itself is gradually getting less easy to maintain. So you want to be looking at your trends in maintenance and support. Am I spending more time? Am I spending more money? Is it getting tougher to do? And that can give you an idea on when it's time to either replace a product or a piece of a product, or maybe time to take one piece of it and redesign it, refactor it. So that's something that we'll come back and address in an upcoming session. All right, we'll leave that one there.